Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olean's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 41, Applique. Applique is a great technique to save time and stitches on a project. Plus, it adds a, a, a lot of dimension and perceived value in many of the projects we do. PE Design Next has an excellent f feature called Applique Wizard that will convert a lot of designs into applique, but it is not applicable in all situations, or it won't do it at all. So let's start out with the things that Applique Wizard does do well. Anytime you have a closed region, whether it's one you create yourself or one of the uh, preformed shapes, rectangles or circles, we'll go ahead and use a, a line region tool and we'll use a closed straight line. Oh, we'll even put a fill in it. And we'll just draw some sort of shape doesn't make a difference and it will automatically close it. Now uh, when you select that object you see how the applique wizard became highlighted that means it's available for use. So let's check it out by clicking on it and let's put it on the default because that's what it will be when you open it up for the first time and uh, you have these four different uh, boxes here. The first says applique material and uh, that is when you hoop the applique material, it sews that line so you know where, to, how to cut out your material so it'll be the right size and shape. Say if we're going to be putting this applique on an apron, the next thing you do is you hoop your apron and you sew out the second st stitches and that is the position. That lets you know where to put out this heart that you had just cut out on your apron. Once it's in place, then you can use the tack down stitch so it will stay in place and won't get uh, uh, out of alignment when you are putting on your covering stitch. Not everyone does applique this way. Some people like to put their applique material directly on top of their apron, hoop it, then sew out the applique position and then while it, the material is still in the hoop they'll cut around it and that means they don't need to use the tack down stitch all they need is the uh, position stitch and the covering stitch so you can say no to the tack down and no to the applique material and now you see it has everything grouped up you're going to see a running stitch which is going to go over your applique material and the apron. Then you, while it's still in the hoop, you'll cut around it and then you'll put your covering stitch. Or if you like to do it uh, the other way, you can uh, use the tack down, cut out, and uh, use all four uh, stages if you like. Another thing the applique wizard is great for is for keyboard or built in text say you have this big A, uh, but the thing with that is that you have to first convert it to an outline before the applique wizard uh, becomes available. It's still shaded out, so we have to do one more step, and that is ungroup it because we see these uh, lines around it. So let's ungroup it. I have that on my quick access. Now it's still not highlighted, and that is because you have to click outside the box, select it again, and now when you go under attributes you will see the applique wizard available. Now in this case because it is an A, it has a, uh, a cutout in the middle, we have to be sure to check the create an applique with hole sewing so make sure you select this, of course we got to go to the default too, uh, so we have all the boxes available. So we're going to check create an applique with hole sewing. And let's go ahead and do this one in all the four steps. Uh, we only did the two steps in the last one. We'll say OK. Alright, and it also is grouped. So let's open up these boxes in the sewing order so you can see what we have here. So you see the first two uh, lines, they are just uh, running stitches and you do that on your applique material that you've hooped separately and then on your apron or shirt or whatever you're putting the applique on 
you will sew down the running stitch positioning stitches. Uh, once your A is in place over the, uh, the applique material A is placed over the positioning stitches, then we will go to the EV tack down stitches. And then lastly, once they're in place, you'll have your zigzag outline stitches. But make sure in your sewing order that the, and the default in a zigzag is two, but make sure you have it thick enough for an applique, which is usually about two and a half to three millimeters. But the applique wizard will not work in a situation like this. Here we have this little kitty, and I want to break it up into two parts, his head and neck and then his body. The reason why is because we can't use a uh, complete closed path because we want the uh, covering stitches or the zigzags also to go up to where these legs are. And yeah, you could add it in later, but I'm going to show you another way. First, I'm going to trace around this kitty's head. Okay, I have uh, outlined around the kitty's head and uh, then I'm going to select it and I'm going to go under the home and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. So now there's a little plus sign and when you open it up uh, you can see there's a two of course. Exactly the same right on top of each other. Now, depending on whether you're going to do the four-step or the three-step, if I'm, uh, we'll say we're going to do this four-step, just like we did with the, the A. I'm going to uh, select it again, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and then one more time, copy and paste. You can't see it until you click on the plus sign, and now you can see all four stitches. The first one to cut out your applique material, the second to place it on your apron or shirt, the third to tack it down, and the fourth to cover it with a zigzag. So we want the first two to be running stitches, but uh, we want our machine to stop after each one. So we're going to make these different colors. We'll make the first one pink. We'll make the uh, second one can be green. We'll make this one here is going to be a tack down stitch. So we'll make this the EV stitch. And we'll make that the same color as what's going to be uh, uh, the covering stitch. So let's make him a gray kitty. And then the uh, tack down, or the covering stitch rather, is going to be a zigzag. And it will also be gray. And let's make sure that zigzag is indeed three millimeters. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with this body. I'm going to get a uh, open curve and straight stitch and we're going to trace around his body. Okay, just about done. Not the best tracing job I ever did, but just to show you how to do this. Okay. I'm going to select this body, change it to a running stitch, make the first color pink, like I did in the other, and then I'm going to home and I'm going to copy paste for the second one, copy paste for the third one, copy paste for the last covering stitch. So let's open it up. The second one, which is the placement stitch, I'm going to make green. And the tack down stitch, I'm going to change to a EV stitch. I hate the way it closes these up after every time you do anything to it. We'll make that gray. And then uh, the last covering stitch is going to be a zigzag. 
was three millimeters and we're making that gray also. So all that's left to do with this applique kitty, because by this time you have the material laid down here and you have it cut and laid down and the body. So the last stitches that are going to go over it are the embroidered collar, nose, and whiskers and eyes. So now I added in some details of the collar and the nose and the whiskers. These will all be sewn over top of the applique material. And that's sort of applique in a nutshell. If you have any more questions about it, just send me an email to my website at orleans.com.